intro this review like I've been introing the rest, which is not introing it at all now that we're actually recording. Let's go ahead and watch some Sir D. Uh, D is going to be here with the small shield and Squire Vores. Chads don't use shields. Based. Based and valid. And to be fair, I could have gotten these names wrong. I just think I've seen D on the Culix channel before, and he's wearing the garb. And he does this he does this setup a lot with his sword down and his like his shield super high. And I feel like it's exactly what Kurai is talking about, where like you're trying to get people to be silly and overreach. Uh Vor's here, that is his real name, with the purple and gray sword in the punch shield. I really dig. I really dig this uh, low guard they're presenting here. This is something that uh, Nip and Rourke beat into me and during the center grip uh, class. Is that if you have this punch shield, why are you simulating a strap shield with it? Put it in weird positions. Also, PTQ covered this in his fundamentals class, his foundations class, where like you are, if you hold your sword right in the middle right like right right in the striking lane then you are equally able to block everything that comes at you but you're also equally open in all the same areas right if you have a punch shield you have so much mobility you can really choose where you want your strength and your weakness to be you can be proactive about it you can dictate from the outset of the fights where you want your strengths and weaknesses to be and then build a game plan off of that what they also coached me on though is because your your shield is so mobile, throwing dark and then throwing, I don't know what you'd call it, dark side, sun side, like throwing over your forearm when you cross over your shield instead of under is so easy to do with a, uh, a punch shield. You should really take that sword that sits up here and lower it down so, so you're already halfway to going under or over. Oh. <laughs> Let's break down this little setup that our small shield fighter has. He posts up in this guard, and we have this very elaborate motion, right? So, first, we flip over high. Breaking the sight line of our opponent, really trying to get him to focus on the sword. We then roll under, cock back to our knee, go back under the shield, then up to throw. And the whole time, it's just like, you know, the, the other fighter can probably throw almost anything and land this. The charge time on that shot is so long. It's part of the reason why I think Ferrix is such a cool fighter to watch, because I see them throw also very complicated... and drops the sword. That's not a good look. I see them also throw very complicated shots and very rarely get punished for it. A little bit of the hiss fake. Like how active our leg fighter is being. Yeah, light side. So fast. Yeah, I got up under. I only I only have two shots that I've named here. I I have the. Uh, the greatest and chiefest of calamities, which is a uh, a dark side flat wrap, very similar to what Ferrix throws, and then the full moon knife hand. 
which is it's a it's a dark side, and that's how you get the full moon aspect of it. But it's a dark side, and you chop down vertically into their sword, their sword and shoulder lane once you're over dark. And so it's a knife hand. It's a, it's a full moon chop. It's a, or it's a dark side chop. It's a full moon knife hand. Like boom shots. I remember Tato's lead exchange series. You had to have a funny name to get included. Close to some nutty boys. Wow. Yeah, or our buckler fighter. I guess it's technically a small shield. We're not quite in buckler range. I feel like it's doing a good job of what a buckler is supposed to be doing. We're lying to our opponents. We're taking up a bunch of space here in their striking lane. Then we'll rotate through. We have a little bit of a twist over to the sword side. Then big, strong, flex, flat wrap. Drop immediately through. Trading for the leg. All of this happened wow. because of the, elusive, the, the elusiveness of uh, being able to fight Buckler and lie to people. Absolutely, Kirai, 100%. I feel like our fighter with the purple sword might be uh, a little bit overly defensive, probably because the smaller shield fighter has successfully lied to them so many times that now they are being a little bit too tight. They're worried about punishing that because they've been killed so many times trying to do it before. Redo it. Redo it. <laughs> Where's my pacifier? There it is. Simul? I threw three, but my last one doesn't count. Okay. You threw three. Hit me twice. Yeah, you got leg arm. But did I hit you twice? Because our first two were in time with our each other's first two, I feel like. Well, I've called deck. I know I know we're dead. Yeah, Kirai, in a way, it's like it's a buckler fighter who's used to fighting sloppier, like small town local fighters. You know, throwing so much bait out there that he can respond to it and punish people. And you then you feel like a fucking badass. It's on video, guys. You guys are, it's on video. You, can check. you feel like you're a fucking badass because you're wrecking these dudes with bigger shields and serious try-hard gear with, you know, your small buckler. Yeah. <laughs> All I know is I died. We both do. We died. I don't think... For sure. I feel like the same thing you're saying about uh, uh, buckler fighters here is kind of the same way I feel about Florentine fighters. Flo flow fighters because I feel like so often they are kind of sh showing from the outset what they want their weakness to be now it's definitely more elusive with flow fighters because the piece of gear you're trying to cheat with is a lot more maneuverable than a board but still like I'm thinking about like when PTQ does like his way far like you know yeah you most people most flow fighters want to be inside of the box somewhere then I've seen PTQ come like way outside over here now that, that that's what I mean by like really strongly choosing where you, what you want to be open and then planning around it. I think it can be good, but I think that there's diminishing returns when it comes to board v board and shield size. I I, I find it hard to justify going smaller than like 24 inches on a punch shield, unless like you're either trying to prove something and have fun, or you're a very small fighter. Yeah, I agree. Probably not a lot of a uh, lot of uh, shots in the rollo decks there to really try to punish. But yeah, I think absolutely the the more the the more the more tricksy your fighter is your opponent is trying to be, 
and buckler fighting is, you know, all tricks. The more conservative you need to be and be smarter. Yeah, like, like talk about like being used to punishing really sloppy fighters. Can we talk about this for a second? Like, the only reason the shield is going back here, if it's intentional at all, is to be a fake, right? And it's not even an, it's not even a good fake with intent. Like, like if this is a fake, what are we trying to sell here? We're not trying to send any particular message. It's just all fucking static. I don't like how little data gathering Ford is doing here either. Yeah, four board. How how little how little data he's gathering. Also, because talking about like that is so fun to watch. You know, when I when I do the uh, the, the double tap, I'm talking about. <laughs> so fun to watch. Um, let me read your message real quick. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's very obvious when you're throwing fakes if all you all you ever throw with is just your arm for your fakes and your shots. We had a conversation like that a couple months back at our practice where it's like, nah, you really fake with like your chest, your hips, and your knees. But, um, but yeah, reconnaissance, gathering data. Like you're talking about throwing fakes to see how they respond to figure out where they want to get hit. That's gathering data. The same thing I was talking about, how I'll try to throw double taps to kind of like gauge their speed and see if I can catch them reset. It's gathering data. You can gather data pretty safely against these buckler fighters because they have to be so active in their defense. And yet we see like no real testing shot here from uh, from boards. I'm not sure what we're oofing about. You'll have to send me a timestamp of this recording or the video we're watching. I think you got it. Cheater times two. Or just call me on fucking uh, Discord if you want me to look at it live. It was 7 5 before that fight. Okay, so it's 8 5. Yeah. It is cool to watch, though. I'll say that. Your eye comments for those watching the recording that the whole strategy for the smaller shield fighter here seems to be to throw wild wow. shit and hope that it lands. And 100% uh, agreed. But hey, it's cool looking. Nah, be loquacious. It's good. It's a small stream and a small channel, baby. I love the engagement. Man. Now, obviously, Kirai, it wasn't anything like this, but this is what I mean by, like, why, like, when I was when I was looking at you and you just weren't doing footwork, in my mind, this is what it looks like. And I'm sure in my brain, if I went back and watched it, there'd be a lot more going on. This is more what I mean, I guess, when I say, like, there is just a total lack of footwork going on here. Like, what are we gaining by being totally still here? Listen, Kirai's fucking edumacated. He's not, like, that. she's not fucking, like, school-smarted. She's self-smarted, but sometimes the self-smarts, especially with a motivated young lady behind, the self-smarts really are better than the school-smarts. Yeah. I mean, so, I'm assuming Kirai is one of those people that had a post-high school reading level in, like, middle school or, uh middle school or elementary school i'm only saying that because here i strikes me as an occasionally depressed person and uh one of the earliest signs of adulthood depression is a 
post high school reading level <laughs> when you're young. <laughs> Ooh, was that leg? Was that leg? Are we sure? Okay, I'm dumb. That was thigh. Yeah, see that like that like wow. e even that right like even that right like like what Varg like what uh, uh Boris did here. Yeah, just pressure the shit out of the board fire out of, out of the the buckler fighter. Just wow. pressure the shit out of him. Throw volume. You know, you can do it cleaner. Or you can talk about doing double taps or doing like fakes to gather data and punish, or just volume them the fuck down. It is it is it is a strat. It is a line. Gear adjustment. Put my balls back together. I'm um, excuse me. We came here to judge people. There we go. Also, I'm curious. I'm always curious when left when people fight uh, punch shield and they're like predominantly or only ever left foot forward. I'm a right foot forward main myself. I try to switch a whole lot. I have like I don't know. I have a lot of different shield guards that I really really enjoy. I've worked kind of hard on developing. I like being able to give people a lot of different looks. Left foot forward, right foot forward. Orthodox with my shield like raised like a strap shield. Damn. Good shot. We're calling that a trade? Damn. Good shot. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> See, look at Sage out here. Look at Sage out here. My, 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 my boy, fucking Sage out here. Now, now listen, now listen, now listen, now listen. Can Sage write an essay? Yes. Will it be good? <sighs> but look at him. He's happy as fuck. No, 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 no. I said, uh, I said, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. something about like you, you were, you, you said oof earlier about something, and I was like, yeah, just call me on Discord if you want to, if you want me to look at it here in real time, or just send me the timestamp of what you're oofing about, either from this video I'm gonna upload or the video I'm reviewing. Here's the title. Ba ba ba. Ooh, there's a part one. Don't get jealous, Kirai. Good. Just imagine waking up, Kirai, at the foot of my bed, holding two bats, whispering. I heard you've been talking to somebody else on Discord. I'm like, no, Kirai, I would never do that. And she goes, now we're going to block strike for the next eight and a half hours. And I'm like blushing, trying to hide my raging uh, whack, whack, whack erection. Punish me with block strike. Ugh. Well, that was a video. Interesting. You know. So we do always try to look at like pattern recognition, right, and what we can do better. And reviewing this, you know, or sum summationing and summarizing this review here, the main things that I'm feeling is that I think our old D here has survived a little bit too long, little bit too long, 
on fancy tricks, and it's time to rein it in a little bit and go back to just some more traditional board fighting with a good pro good guard projection. I mean, they're, they're, no matter what your shield size is, there's no reason to hold this close to your body unless it weighs a million pounds, then why would you have it weigh a million pounds? You know, the, the, the fakiness only gets you so far. There's that old, that old phrase, um, slough your way to the middle. You can also bullshit your way to the middle, but you got to have your fundamentals and body mechanics and footwork and block strike beyond then. I would have liked to see if have seen Vors here use a little bit more just honestly disrespect. I know that's a weird way to phrase it, but it's what it feels like to me is that sometimes you just respect somebody as a fighter too much. You respect their skill level too much. And you need to have that little bit of arrogance and egotism to just decide, like, I'm just going to fucking stroke this dude and just, like, throw your 90 percenters at him as hard as you can. I uh, would have liked to have seen a bit more of that. That's generally, I think, a good way to have to approach buckler fighting, or fighting buckler fighters, I should say. But, yeah, we'll wrap it there. I'd love to fight these guys sometime. These are the guys who I feel like, honestly, after all this critique, are probably right in my skill level. I'd love to check that against them and see where we're at.